So the next presenter will join us online. It is Dr. Stefan Panther, who is Professor uh, of Pluralist Economics at the Hochschule für Gesellschaftsgestaltung at Koblenz in Germany. Uh, here I place Cecilia Graupe, who unfortunately cannot give her speech due to an illness. In his research, he's analyzing the economies with different approaches and from different perspectives so that we can make it fairer and more sustainable. The title of his presentation is Giving Meaning Alive, Transformative Learning in Economics. So, good afternoon. Stefan Panther, can you hear us? Can you see us? I don't know in which direction I have to look. Well, I can, I can hear you somewhat remote, but I can hear you and I can hear, I can see uh, the, the slides being projected. So that's perfect. Then, yeah, we'd like to ask you to start with your presentation. Welcome, Stefan uh, Panther. Thank you very much, and uh, sorry for not being able to be uh, there in, in, in person, but uh, uh, the whole thing, as you just heard, uh, arrived uh, with me at short notice. And uh, I, I will also, while this will be very much in line with what uh, Celia Graupe has in mind, whom I'm working with since eight years, um, it also is basically my way of thinking about something which I would have called here transformative economics. Before I actually go through my points, which will fundamentally be um, a series of um, theses, um, very pointed theses, which try to make, uh, make a, a statement, uh, which I then explain and uh, unfold, I'd like to start with this uh, quote of the British uh, philosopher Alfred North Whitehead, which I uh, like very much. Um, you have read it already. And uh, I guess uh, most of you would have anticipated that the picture I draw of, um, well, both um, the ideal university, the researcher, university teacher, and the university student is somebody who is not falling into the trap of either being a fool or being a pedant. And so that's very much in line what I will propose from here onwards. First thesis. I think if you want to talk about transformative economics, you have to redefine what we are talking about. Economics is about how societies best organize their provisioning and care. So it's the suggestion that we have to go back to a substantive de uh, definition of what economics is, very much in a tradition before a certain, the mainstream economic thinking has been taking over as uh, claiming to be the only way to think about economics. Um, if you think about it like that, there is fundamentally three insights come into mind quite quickly. There is no magic bullet in this question. The answers to this question, which the, the this thesis is actually implicitly posing, they will differ from time and place. Money markets, bureaucracy, or whatever way to coordinate economic activities you might think of are means, they're not ends. And the way society organizes economies can be shaped. It's something we as a society have in hand, and we should do this very consciously. Second statement, and that again might be uh, that might be very for some of you probably this might be uh, almost trivial, for others might might be provocative. Economics is about the common good. This has several implications. The first of one is that if you deal with economics either as a researcher or as a teacher or as a student, ethical and political concerns cannot be separated from the economic science and its teaching. Particularly relevant are issues of justice. 
distributive justice and issues of Trump discrimination come to the mind quickly. Second implication, there is no way to do or teach economics from an ethical and political neutral position. So the only way to deal with this issue is to reflect your own position, make it explicit to whoever you're talking to, especially, but especially to your students, offer a pluralism of perspectives, and get out and learn about the perspectives of those you do research about, which is fundamentally already a call to a transdisciplinary way of doing research, doing research with the people you're researching about, not about them. Having these two theses up front about what, economic, what I think our economics is all about, um, a few principles of university education, um, fundamentally of any education. That's why the university is in brackets. First principle, I experience and firmly believe that, and I could say we firmly believe that students and indeed all humans are learning and creative creatures. That has direct consequences. And I've heard when tuning in, Somebody talk about thinking out of the box. Yes, indeed. Make students able to develop their own way of thinking about economic issues in an imaginative and creative ways. Um, yeah. Second principles, and that's, I think, is very, very old stuff, um, very, very Humboldt stuff. University are places for debate and free development. So, this underlines the idea that we have to provide students with a diversity of perspectives. And it also, in our understanding, means that if you look at the econom economy, you can't leave things to economists or um, business practitioners or business uh, teachers in business administration or management. Interdisciplinarity is called for anybody uh, so, for example, also political science or sociology has to come into the fore. Third principle, mm, that might be something pretty new or, I don't know, uh, to some of you. Knowledge is knowledge only if it can be and is connected to the life of the learning person. So we very strongly argue for what we call what you call a life world orientation. Um, I don't want to go into, go into philosophy of this. It doesn't need to be going into the philosophy of this. Um, it fundamentally means uh, an orientation at the day on the day-to-day -day life of people and whatever we do has and how that, that affects them from their day-to-day -day perspective. For example, what does an econom economic policy mean for the life of people? What they do, what they say, what they feel, how they interact. Or teaching this means put students in touch with those who do public economic decisions and involve them in real economic issues. I think that's the last two are probably relatively uncontroversial. Um, the first might probably be something which is um, disputable or not so common. Um, I'm already now coming to something. So far, I've talked about university education as such and economics as such. I have not talked about um, the specific situation of we're finding ourselves in right now, which is more the kind of um, topic, the kind of um, theme this conference is addressing with the, the focus on sustainability and the WWF uh, report on it, in Switzerland, and how to do the, to deal this. And at the HFGG, we are are fundamentally living on the, the assumption or teaching and doing research on the assumption that we are indeed um, living in a world struck by those multiple crises which are interrelated. And they question the way of running our lives fundamentally. So again, you you, you see here the 
um, the emphasis on on the daily life um, of people and uh, so to speak that that perspectives but that also has of course a an implication on our institutions and so on so up to now up to this slide I fundamentally have talked about how university education should be anyway and I've talked about how um, the Economics should be anyway, but much of what I have been saying so far is underlined, is um, made strong. I mean, the point is made, make, is made stronger by this fact of actually a, a world in crisis. Um, and I, I like to use a metaphor for this. Um, as an institutional economic economist, I very much uh, like the the metaphor of a game, and uh, and uh, the idea that what we are um, what we're doing as societies and as, as as humans is fundamentally playing games, games with very serious consequences, of course, for everybody of our lives, the consequences up to life and death. But nevertheless. There is a very strong similarity between the, the way we organize society and the, the way we organize rituals or any other game. So to use that metaphor, what we should aim for more than ever before, because we are in a we are in a situation where we have multiple crises overlaying each other, uh, the climate crisis and uh, the, which is global uh, and at the same time, for example, a, a geopolitical crisis where the present world order, um, hegemonic as it was, is breaking down and uh, the, probably the solution possibilities, at least in the short run, in the world community for these kind of problems are declining. So these, uh, at the same time, we have a, a, a crisis of, of democracy, which internally is probably uh, weakening the possibility, the, 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 the possibilities, the faculties of societies to actually address these crises. So what, what our good students of economics uh, should aim for is that we masters of the redesign of the economic games we play and not masters in playing the game itself. I do strongly have the feeling that much economic training and business training is geared towards making students masters in playing the game. We should make them masters of redesigning economic games, at least transformative economics is all about that. Mm. And masters of redesigning economic games are masters of projecting their vision of a better way of doing economics into an uncertain future. So it's all about what we, what business administration people, management people are um, trying to instill in their students for the limited purposes of usually for-profit uh, enterprises. This ability has to be freed from the straitjacket of the for-profit enterprise and has to be made universal for the way we are organizing our economies and uh, in a very much more general way in societies. So this ability to project a vision into an uncertain future is very essential. Two examples from our teaching. I think I have two or three minutes left. Um, the first thing is what we call for future lab, something we project outside our university. We try to um, to scale up and but also integrate very much into our teaching programs, must be master or bachelor. Um, the fundamentally, this is all about um, a systematic way to induce this ability to use, to train the ability to have an imagination of future, of a, a desirable future in students and um, making them in a systematic way able to get rid of mere the, imagining that, that future as a mere prolongation of trends. I might, you might know um, this these kind of um, old cartoons where um, 
In 1900, people imagined uh, life in the year 2000, where you have steam engine driven uh, flying cars or something like that. So there is lots of trend projecting, trying to get rid of that and um, reframe those, those imaginations of the future and making them close to how do you actually get there? I don't know, how do, do you get into action? And these are um, modules or, or frames of, of, of actually using, which we use in our in our programs more than once at, at the beginning of this, the, the program of, of, of the bachelor program or the master program, but also at the end for actually um, collecting the, the transformative ideas which students got from their, um, from their studies. Now, the other example, I have to switch to a, a different presentation. So I'm going to get, get out of this one and show you something else. Um, just a second, here we are. I think you'll still see this. Um, this is my introduction, plural historical introduction into economics. It's pluralistic. You have very straightforward as many pluralistic economic teaching, you have a, this is German, I'm sorry, um, you have a um, the ma major schools of thought, um, the economic classics, Marx, historical schools, original institutionalism, um, economic sociology, Keynesianism, and so on. Now, this is not a history of economic ideas class. What is actually important here that students are confronted with what are the how are these guys thinking? What are their basic ethical uh, values? What are is, is the institutional ideal they they pursue in those? And especially, what are the key concepts with which these schools are thinking? And these key concepts, these are key analytical concepts are uh, then make students able to actually think about economics in from very different perspectives and with very different key questions. And we then also um, say, uh, point to them out after then using these concepts to actually understand present day economics and economies. Um, we then finally give them ideas that all, all these kind of ideas are not historically dead they are used by economists today, and we, we end with uh, pointing out how these ideas are then a, be able, we are able to use them um, in a transformative way to think about economics. This is where I will stop. Thanks for listening, and I am ready to take questions. Many, many thanks, Stefan. I hope you could hear the applause. If not, I tell you there was a big applause for your presentation. We estimated it very much. And I will, as, as well as with the other uh, presentators, I will uh, ask you two or three questions. And you, as, <coughs> as guests, have the possibility afterwards to get the QR code for further questions. So your university is considered as a role model when it comes to integrating ideas of sustainable development uh, into economic courses. And we heard that also in your presentation, you talked about uh, diversity of perspectives, you talked about own way of thinking, uh, make people, make students masters of redesigning and not just of playing the game as we know it it uh, exists already and you i think you know very well the the landscape of universities in germany and how do you assess the situation at other universities in germany from your perspective where are they um, in this process of redesigning also their curricula i i, I see a lot of experimentation um i must admit most outside economics departments. I mean, ex economics departments usually, I still think, are, tend to be very conservative. Uh, so these things have to be, say, in social science departments, 
There are a few exceptions to that, um, but uh, as far as I, I learn, there are uh, endangered spe species, for example, uh, programs at the Wirtschafts Universität, Wirtschafts Universität uh, Wien, uh, I learned are endangered. Um, so, so that's that's that. Uh, I, I do think that uh, to some extent, uh, business departments, as they always were, are more open and more diverse. Um, but uh, what I don't see is uh, so that I see lots of experiments, but I don't see is a clear cut idea what 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 we want to do. Um, maybe to to insist a little bit in in the actual situation, if we comes to the economic community, whoever this may is, or the, the classical com economic community, what they think about your approaches. Do they see what you are doing? Do they discuss what you are doing? Or do they just think, oh, let them talk, it's not our business? Is there any kind of perception you have? Well, um, the, the movement of pluralistic economics, as such, has uh, had some, of, had of course some attention because it was very much student-driven over the last ten years after the financial crisis. I think I myself, I'm in in, in a panel uh, next Wednesday at the Verein for Sozialpolitik. Um, I don't think there is a lot of. A, dealing with these approaches, I must say. Um, and again, I emphasize, I think the chances are much higher um, to, to, to get things more moving in social science departments than in economics departments. I think that's a long way, um, which is not, nothing new. I, to some extent, um, I have been working in the, air, in the area of area studies before. So um, economics with the focus on Latin America, and uh, the, it is always has always been a big problem to get colleagues into that, because uh, yeah, the way economics is thought and taught these days. Thank you. I'd like to ask you one last question. I come to my favorite topic. Uh, some of you know now what I will ask. I don't know, but what. What exactly do you teach when it comes to the dilemma between economic growth and environmental degradation? What, what do you answer people who say, yeah, we, we have to grow and yeah, so. I, <laughs> my, my take is, fun, is fundamentally the, the, the take uh, Kate Raworth takes in, in her book. Um, I think she moved a bit to more skeptical position uh, lately, uh, I say what, what matters is um, that we get the get an economy which respects the environmental um, limits which we have, uh, full stop, the material limits which we have, the ecological limits which, which, which our activity on earth actually poses, full stop. Whether that then is a growing economy in BIP terms or not, I don't really care about. Now, that last sentence is a bit uh, too pointed because I do believe that uh, there's a very serious possibility that we don't, we cannot keep, um, we cannot keep our, uh, we cannot keep within the ecological limits of the earth and our local environment in a growing economy. So um, we do have to very seriously think about how to organize a degrowth economy, uh, even if I'm agnostic whether that will be happen or not. So I think um, not only our students are happily founding degrowth societies and whatever and participating in our in these conferences, but I also think that degrowth is something which we have to seriously consider if we Serious, we are, if we are seriously serious about um, not going beyond uh, the ecological limits of the, our local and global environments, which does not mean back to the trees, which does not mean curtailing innovative technological solutions. It just means uh, ending uh, an, an immense material uh, waste, which were 
and and damage we are producing by the way we are organizing our interaction with planet earth so, thank you very very much stefan panther and thank you yeah thanks for having me thank you bye